I'm Bolt. I'm going to be talking about uh, Xcube and what we've been de developing within the Xcube ecosystem as part of the uh, OpenEM project and uh, how this ties into CDSE. So to start with the... Hang on. Forward doesn't seem to be... Oh, there we are. Okay, so the very high-level overview of what I'm going to be presenting, uh, a new t tool or tool set called XC Engine. And this is uh, aimed at em implementing what in OpenEM is termed the Compute Engine component. And um, essentially, what we're looking at doing here is taking Python scientific notebooks and uh, turning them into reusable drop-in take-anywhere containers, um, which can then be reused and incorporated into larger scientific workflows. So it's this now a slightly notorious bridge between the, the exploratory uh, user-centric workflow, uh, sorry, scientific use case development scale and large-scale deployment that we're, we're looking at again, again here. So uh, the requirements that we're working under are our usual ones free using the common technology stack, uh, the Python scientific software stack that we mostly work with, versatile, so it's developed for OpenEM but not restricted to OpenEM, and extensible and scalability is uh, a major thing that we're aiming at. So this is um, OpenEM developed, but the, the sort of essential ingredients, at least in the current setup, are Python and X-Array which is also a central ingredient of uh, Xcube itself. And this has been publicly released already uh, in an initial version, and development is now ongoing. Seems to be a bit of a delay on the slides. I don't even know where I should be pointing at. Aha! Maybe it just choked on this enormous Xcube overview slide. Um, yeah, the Xcube ecosystem gets a little bit harder to introduce with every passing year because it keeps growing and modularizing. Uh, you'll be glad to know that I'm not going to be talking about all this today, but. I thought it would be quite a useful uh, scene setting context exercise. So the core and the, the sort of initial component of Xcube back when it started 10 or whatever years ago is a Python library offering uh, GeoDataCube facilities on top of X-Array and sitting within a Python environment with a set of Python APIs. But uh, there's also, it also has command line interfaces, and importantly, it has a, quite a versatile server component, which uh, runs as a modular server offering rather a lot now of um, different EO-related web REST APIs. Some of them are in-house. Um, for instance, the one developed for the viewer, which I'll talk about a bit later. And then we also have standard things like uh, WCS, OGC coverages, stack, and so forth. And uh, a dynamic S3 API, which uh, I'll also talk about a little bit later. But um, so Xcube server, to some extent, functions as a sort of clearinghouse between APIs and formats in that we have plugins for server components up there, and we have plugins for data input down here. And these are just, uh, these implement a very simple internal API, which then lets you interface almost any data source of appropriate form, meaning something that can be represented as an X-ray or a data, data cube of some kind, uh, into the X-cube system. So if you have, an S3 data set, and you need to present that as OGC coverages, you can glue them together with an Xcube server. Vice versa, if you have coverages and you want to dynamically create a virtual S3 ZAR for that, then you can do that too. So, 
last, no, it's not the last massive block diagram, but this is uh, the Xcube compute engine, not in the Xcube ecosystem, but within the OpenEM project and how we conceived this. So this little box here, the Xcube server, is uh, the one that was in the middle on the last uh, project. And this is what we're doing with the X XC engine, is putting this Xcube server in a Docker container and tying it to use case specific processing, which derives from an OpenEM use case. And important to note here is this is a compute engine, but the engine itself here is not referring to a static component because the engine is always specific to the use case. It's a generated engine that packs in the use case with Xcube and some other things. And this gives it access to any data which is interfaceable with Xcube. Virtual czar is kind of here called out as a particularly appealing feature, but it's, it's actually just one of these many uh, APIs that Xcube server implements. But this is quite nice in that uh, many applications and libraries now read czar, and this means you can have a czar without writing it. It's just, it goes via the Xcube server, which pulls in the data dynamically from the backends. Um, Dask is rather work in progress, so I won't go into that too deeply at the moment. Um, so looking here into how the Xcube compute engine is built and put together, as I said, the compute engine itself is specific to the use case. So the actual tool we're presenting here is not a single compute engine, but uh, the very originally named build XCE tool, which takes the ingredients and produces one of these reusable compute engine containers. So looking at what goes into it, obviously the main ingredient, the scientific notebook itself, the OpenEM or other use case which motivates the whole thing. The scientific notebook is in communication probably with some data backends, with some cloud storage. It's running in a Python environment. That needs to be packed in as well, of course. Fortunately, Conda works quite well for this, and we can, we can pull out the current environment or a specified environment and pack that, it, pack that into the container image as well. Data store plugins, this should really be depicted up here because that's sort of the interface to a lot of the, the backends. Anyway, buildxc takes all that. In case the use case is not using Xcube, it also pulls in Xcube, and it produces a Docker image which integrates all those things. Um, there are a few interesting interfacing issues around the edges, which I won't go into, but the main thing is you can then run that. You can run it locally. You can run it in a, uh, any cloud Docker environment. And um, the reason I've made these arrows red and labeled them with CDSC is to remind myself to mention the CDSC connection here is it's not just another generic Docker environment. The nice thing is this access to all the EO data uh, archives and backends, which is managed through uh, the account management system. And the nice thing is you have a Jupyter Hub environment where you can develop your notebooks. But for bigger processing, for batch jobs and so on, you can also buy in via C CDSC, say a CreoDS uh, Docker environment, where you can run this and crucially have access to the, to the same data sources. So it's not just another generic Docker solution. And of course, once you have your compute engine running there, it's got a running Xcube server. It's got the, all the API endpoints if you want to interface it to some larger system. And it's got the Xcube viewer, which I'll go into a little more later. Here's a slightly more exploded view of the same thing, showing what's going on inside this container. It's sort of the last diagram, but with all the ingredients packed inside. So there's the user code, there's the Xcube server talking to the outside world. Optionally, you can cache data locally with inside, uh, within the uh, container, but of course, it's mainly mainly intended that uh, you're looking at cloud resources. And there's some para parameterization, which the talk being somewhat short, I'm not going to go too deeply into, but uh, in brief, you can annotate some, uh, some variables within your notebook and then have them 
act as parameters which can be set from outside the container. If anyone's used uh, pay for meal, it's a similar system to that. Um, so mainly I've talked to date about the interactive Xcube server mode, but there's also a batch mode, and this becomes more interesting for large-scale processing of whole data sets. Xcube server mode is nice because it's a dynamic thing. You can, you can have a backend containing an awful lot of data, and you can browse around it in the viewer or in any API that you, that you want to interface with that's off offered, offered by the server, and it will only pull the data that's, that's needed. But, of course, if you just want to run it old school, one off, and generate an output data set, you can also run the same container with slightly different parameters and just do a one off batch run, run. And that's a good use case for you've developed it in, on your local machine or on a CDSE free Jupyter account, and you want to do something larger scale and you combine large cloud resources for a small peri short period to do that. And there's also a hybrid mode where you can, you can do the batch run, ca cache the results, and then you can use uh, the viewer or the other APIs with less lag because it's not pulling in the backend data live as you're looking at it. So going, oh, sorry about the wall of text, but um, this is a sort of progressive workflow from the user viewpoint that you can use to, uh, to get towards the goal of having a, a container running in the cloud. For a very fast turnaround, uh, BuildXC doesn't even have to produce a container. It can just turn your notebook into a Python script, which adds the parameterization and the Xcube component and, uh, and runs more or less like the container, except you do it in your current Python environment where your notebook also runs. So that's a, that's a good lightweight way to, to test out the functionality before you uh, actually go into container build mode, which obviously takes a bit longer because you have to build the, rebuild an entire Python environment within that container. And then you have a sort of interactive exploratory mode within this container where you can use the server, the viewer, any APIs you like to, to look around at what's in there. You can run that container locally and once you're happy with how it's running locally, you can deploy that in the cloud, CDSE, or wherever. But as mentioned, the, the EO data uh, access is a very nice selling point for CDSE. So if we go into an example of how this works in practice here, um, I took a fairly simple notebook for the first conversion example, and uh, this is uh, this is actually a plain, unmodified notebook from one of, uh, one of Xcube's many data stores, the CCI one, which pulls in data from the ESA CCI open data portal. And so this is what the notebook looks like running in JupyterLab, just a sort of very straightforward demo, pull in some data, plot it. I can't remember if it does any basic processing on it, but essentially you end up, you end up with a, a map of aerosols above Africa plotted within the notebook here. Now we run the conversion process at the moment. Uh, BuildXC just has a command line interface, but it's a very straightforward process here. In fact, the only thing you need to say is buildxc build my notebook dot ipynb and make a cup of coffee, and uh, then you have your container image. Uh, but you can also say, add a server parameter, and that means don't just build my image, but uh, as soon as it's done, start a container, run it locally, and uh, then, well, an API is kind of boring on a slide, but open up localhost 8080, and here you are, Xcube's landing page, uh, which if you scroll down quite far, would list all the APIs that it's now making available. So, um, partly because it's the most photogenic API, here's the Xcube viewer in action, and this is packed into the Xcube server as well. Um, I mean, it's the Xcube viewer browser side bit is just a, a JavaScript application that runs in the browser, and this uh, uses an in-house API to interface with the Xcube server backend that's also simultaneously running. So, this is just what you get 
if you convert your notebook, uh, run the container, and go to localhost slash viewer. And here it's uh, later on, I'll, there'll be a link for a live demo version of the viewer. I mean, it's, uh, the viewer is not new, but it keeps getting new capabilities. Uh, it's quite hard to keep up. Um, and here, any, effectively, any data set that's produced by the scientific notebook then comes up, is automatically pulled out of the Python environment and added as an option here. And you, you can browse through all your data sets, all their variables. You can sketch uh, interesting shapes on your map and compute on the fly statistics for them, time series. There's uh, quite a lot to, to get into there. So uh, just a, a brief word, word on release and availability. This is, as I mentioned at the start, already releases open source, uh, along with the rest of the XQB ecosystem. It's out there on GitHub, and uh, we are continuing to uh, actively develop it beyond what I've presented here today. And yeah, as I mentioned, there's a live viewer URL that will be on the last slide as well. Now, a slight excursion here. Um, the batch mode, which I've emphasized a little bit less than the Xcube server mode, is possibly actually the more interesting one, even though it's not as photogenic. Um, and as we were working along this concept that we first presented at last year's global workshop, uh, it gradually became clear that we're, to some extent, starting to reinvent uh, OGC application packages. And this seems to be an idea that's popping up in a lot of projects now. We've seen it in Earthcode and Apex, which we're also involved in. Uh, there's, there's potential for integration with uh, OpenEO workflows. So this is really an exciting route for getting a scientific notebook use case into a sort of reusable building block implementing standard APIs that can be integrated into larger workflows. So what we're doing now is we're working towards making this uh, batch mode fully interoperable as an application package. Uh, an application package isn't quite just a container image. There's some metadata for um, parameter, parameterization and defining inputs and outputs. But it's really, it's a very nice next step from what I've shown here with this uh, fairly basic container creation. And uh, also quite excitingly, it's got built-in facilities for some simple parallelization modes. So especially for the sort of class of easily parallelizable and embarrassingly parallelizable problems, things like I can do it for one tile now, I want to do it for 100. This is a, this is a really nice architecture to be able to exploit. So this is the direction we're moving in and uh, might end up being more useful than the, the interactive browser version. We'll, we'll see about that, but it will retain both capabilities in any case. So uh, just a quick overview of where we are and where we're going at this point. Um, the next step, of course, is actually publishing some applications to Open Earth Monitor use cases. Uh, we already have the, the first one lined up from Daniel, which uh, I didn't quite have time to work into this presentation, unfortunately. Uh, alignment with the OGC application package best practices, as I just mentioned. And uh, the rest is mainly sort of minor improvements uh, in handling environments, handling parameters, credential management. Uh, one interesting idea is uh, how we actually want to interface and present this. Um, command line interface feels like a natural one to me, but uh, I'm coming from a very computer science direction here. And it would, in principle, be fairly straightforward to add a sort of drag and drop web, web interface, drop off your notebook here and uh, grab your container in a couple of minutes. So that's in fact all I have today, except for the acknowledgements. Of course, primarily 
I need to acknowledge the Open Earth Monitor project, which made it possible for ca to carry out this work and which is motivating what we're actually doing with this compute engine. And um, yeah, the, thanks to the whole scientific Python software stack that we're building on, uh, we don't need to reinvent the wheel so we can invent more interesting things than the wheel. And it's really what we're doing is very largely dependent on X-rays, R, and everything that underlies those libraries. Um, as promised, here is a live viewer demo in case anyone wants to play with fun data sets and pretty pictures. There's even a QR code for it as well. And um, thank you for listening. <laughs>